Hello everybody, Andrea here. Happy New Year, it's January 1st. If you're like me, I take the New Year as time to get organized, to clean up my entire house, organize my paperwork files, I do my taxes, all kinds of things. But if you have your own dental hygiene practice, one of the things you've probably thought about is how can I do better for the New Year? Whether that be as an entrepreneur, um, business, patients, it doesn't matter, but you want to do better probably in all aspects of your business. If you're lucky and you don't feel like you have to do better, good for you. Please comment below and let me know what you're doing because even I feel that I can improve on things too. But one thing that I don't have a problem doing, which I realize is a very lucky attribute, I guess, is that I am always fully booked with patients. So I want to share with all of you guys how I do that and how you can prep for the new year now to be fully booked with patients as soon as you do get back to work. So hopefully you have taken time off. So the first thing to do is go through your recall lists. So if you have a dental software, depending on what software you have, you will be able to print out or at least save to your computer recall lists. So that that means you can see what patients are due now, what patients were due a couple months ago. It's time to, to start calling those patients, emailing them, messaging them, however you stay in, in to contact with them and just let them know they are due for their appointment. 99% of my patients, honestly, they are more than happy to book their appointment, but they forget or they assume that I've done it for them. Or did I mention they forget? Like that's truly what happens. So don't think it's because your patients don't want to be booked in. It's because they just simply forgot and they've been thinking, oh yeah, I need to call Andrea to book my teeth cleaning, but they just forget to do it. And unfortunately they will contact you when they're in pain. And that's just a whole other story. So look at your, your recare lists first, okay? So I'm a mobile hygienist. So things are a little bit different for me where I go to different cities on different days. So my recare list is a little bit more confusing where it depends on what patients are in what area. So that takes me a little bit longer to do, but it's amazing how I just simply send them a quick message. And I actually say something like this. So I say, I have tentatively booked your appointment for you. Um, for the end of the month, so pick a date. Um, I had this booked in already to hold your spot. I look forward to seeing you for your teeth cleaning appointment. Let me know if another day works for you. And that's all I do, you guys. So what I don't do is I don't say, hey, you're due. I mean, nobody would say, hey, but you know, hey, you're due for your teeth cleaning. Please let me know when you want to come in you should really book that appointment for them. Um, hold that spot. Yes, you're taking a risk, hold that spot. And hopefully they will let you know and call you back, message you back, whatever. So what happens if a patient doesn't get back to me? I will actually message them back a couple weeks later. So I don't do it the next day. I don't do it a couple days later. I do it a couple weeks later because they might've been busy. They might be on holiday. I mean, not holidays, but because we can't go anywhere right now. Now, um, because of COVID, but they, they could just be simply busy, right? Or they don't know their work schedule yet because they have taken time off. So I do leave it a couple weeks. If I still don't hear from them after that, then I will take that time out of the appointment book because I don't want to hold it. I'm just assuming they're not going to come. And with me, it's a little bit easier because I'm a mobile hygienist. So it's not like they're just going to show up in my office and say, oh, you said I had an appointment. No, I would have to go to them, right? And how it works with me is I send them a COVID pre-screening the day before. So I kind of know what's happening before I just show up at their house. So does that make sense, you guys? Let me know if you have any questions on wording or anything about that. Another thing to start doing is book their appointment before they leave. I do this with all my patients. In fact, if I forget to mention to them that I've booked it, they will say to me, so can you just book my next appointment and let me know when I'm due? And that's what I do. So I do just book their next one, even if I haven't talked to them, even if we haven't worked out a time yet. I put it in my computer so I hold that spot. That's easier for me than printing out recare lists anyway. So when that appointment 
comes up, or I should say that week comes up or that month, I look to see who I've pre-booked. So they're not confirmed yet. I do expect my entire month schedule to change because they're not pre-booked yet, but I still book them in to hold that spot to remind myself that they are due. I have heard from so many patients, they really appreciate this. They don't want to be bothered with having to remember to book appointments. Heck, I'm the same way. When it comes to my car appointments, when it comes to my hair appointments, when it comes to taking my dogs to the vet, I like things to be pre-booked because then by the time I realize their appointments needed, I can't get in for like a month. So it's a little bit crazy, right? So pre-book their appointments works every time. Another tip. If you're not um, direct billing yet, I suggest you do it. This is what keeps my schedule full as I tell every single patient, I direct bill for you. I also do something a bit different where I don't ask for payment upfront, even if I know for a fact they're 80% covered or 85% covered, whatever. I don't ask for payment upfront. I send it through to their insurance. I let them know that I will simply send them send them an invoice. When I, when I hear back, they can pay by email money transfer, whatever, and I go from there. Patients really appreciate not having to pay upfront, but it is a risk, obviously. I haven't had any problems yet, knock on wood, with somebody not paying me. If or when that ever happens, then I might have to stop that. I would probably ask for a deposit or something, but that seems to help so many patients because I know a lot of people won't book their appointment because they simply don't have the money. They will say, okay, it's great that you send everything to my insurance first. I just simply don't have the money to even pay the difference. So I'll let you know in a month, but then a month comes up and they don't have the money again. So that's just what I do. That keeps my schedule full. It truly does. Now, people ask me about emergency appointment times. So I'm different because I'm not a dentist, but I do still have a lot of patients that say, oh my goodness, my tooth hurts. Can you just come have a look? Quite often, it's because they have gingival recession. I apply desensitizer, they're happy. So a dental hygienist can carve out time for emergencies, but I also carve out time for new patients or for those patients who just simply email me or message me and say, oh, you know what, um, I'm off next week. I really want my teeth cleaned, can you fit me in? That's not an emergency, but they will go into that spot that I had on on hold for such, I guess, a reason. It's not an emergency, but I want to make and keep my patients happy, right? So instead of me saying, oh, geez, I'm booked two months in advance, you could have told me this two months ago. And then they say, oh, okay, sorry, well, I'm off next week. That's, that's it. I guess I'll let you know when my next time off is. That's what happens. So I do suggest carving time in your schedule to bring in those patients who really want to be seen plus new patients. There's nothing worse than telling a new patient you can't see them for two months. Again, it's a good problem to have if you're that busy, but I have lost patients in the past where I, I, I do say to them, okay, I can't see you for about a month. I promise to tell you if something sooner comes up. I might tell them in a month, oh, okay, perfect. You are, um, I'm seeing you in three days for your dental hygiene appointment. I can't wait to meet you. And then they say to me, oh shoot, I went to the dentist after all, cause I couldn't wait a month. They didn't tell me, but you know, it's a good thing I did call to remind them of their appointment. So it's really, really good to have those time slots available. Another tip is accept email money transfer. A lot of dental hygienists don't. I don't know why. It's very easy. I, I accept email money transfer. I accept credit card. I prefer email money transfer because it goes right into my account and there's no processing fees, but people do like email money transfer. So I do suggest accepting that. Um, that was actually a longer video than I had intended. So I hope this helped you guys, but those are, I would say the simple things that I do to keep my schedule booked. One thing that I didn't men um, mention is to market. It's a great idea to market. If you have a page on Facebook, a website post, it doesn't have to be every day. It could be every other day, but just post things about you, you know, smiling. You're about to see your patient of the day, you know, post a picture of your new polishing tool, post a picture of all the toothbrushes that just came in the mail, 
post, post, post. That's about marketing. You're not saying, hey guys, who wants to have their teeth cleaned? Not necessarily, so you're not being pushy, but people like those posts and they like to see that. So let me know if you guys have any other tips or any questions. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Happy New Year and have a good day.